Fortunately, in the question, they have drawn a reasonably well-drawn and labeled diagram, but we have added the labels that the cardboard was four feet long by three feet wide. What we're going to do is cut out some squares and then fold this up into an open-topped box. And the key is to try to find an equation for the volume of that box. And to do so, the first thing we need is the measurement of this dimension here. And hopefully we can see that because the original cardboard length was four feet and you're cutting out X on this side and then another X on that side, so in other words, you're cutting out two X's, that the length of this side would be the four feet minus those two X dimensions that you cut out. So that's going to be one of the dimensions that we need. Another dimension we need for our box is this one right here. Now, in this case, you're cutting away 1x on this side and 2x on the other side. Note it's 2x over there. So what happens is you're taking the original cardboard length of 3 feet and you are subtracting the 1x cut out on the bottom and the 2x cut out on the top. So overall, you're subtracting away a 3x there. Now, it's a little bit hard to visualize perhaps, but what we'll do is draw a picture of the folded up box. So there is our open topped box. Now the box had a length of four minus two X and it had a width of three minus three X. And then when it's all folded up, that little X dimension that has been cut out, when you fold up like this flap right here and this flap right here, that X becomes the height of the box. So hopefully that's easy to visualize, but there is the height of our box and we need the volume. We are trying to maximize the volume of this box. Now, of course, volume is length times width times height. So we would have the length of four minus two X times the width of three minus three X times the height of X. We'll put the X in the front for convenience. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify this expression. And what you wanna do here is FOIL the four minus two X and the three minus three X. So four times three is 12. This four times negative three X is negative 12 X. Three times negative two X is negative six X. And then negative two X times negative three X is a positive six X squared. We can combine some like terms in the middle there. We have 12 minus 18 X. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to distribute this X here. And when we do that, we get our simplified volume equation. It's equal to 12 X minus 18 X squared plus six X to the power of three. Now to maximize a quantity, we need the equation in terms of a single variable, which is exactly what we have. But then we also need the derivative. So your next step would be to calculate the derivative of our volume equation. Now the derivative of 12x of course is just 12 minus, we're gonna do a power rule here, multiply two times 18, that gives us 36. And then this becomes x to the power of one because you have to subtract one from the power. Similarly, three times six is 18. And then we're gonna have x to the power of two. So that's our derivative. And what we do next is set that equal to zero. It would help us if we rewrote this in a standard order. So we'll have 18x squared minus 36x plus 12, set this equal to zero. We could simplify this by dividing each term by six, including the zero. This leaves us with a simplified derivative of three X squared minus six X plus two is equal to zero. Now, this does not factor, unfortunately, so we'll have to use the quadratic formula. Recall for the quadratic formula, we have our A is equal to three, our B is equal to negative six, and then our C is equal to two, and then we'll go ahead and write out our quadratic formula. There is our quadratic formula, and now we will plug in our A, B, and C. Notice you have a negative negative six there, so you're gonna get x is equal to positive six plus or minus the square root. Simplifying underneath the radical gives you 12, and then this is all divided by six, but we can do better. We can simplify this a little bit further. Let's rewrite the radical 12 as radical four times radical three. That'll be convenient because radical four, or the square root of four is just two. So we can make that into a two right here. And then we can simplify it a little bit further by dividing every coefficient by two. So we'll divide the six by two, that two by two, and this six by two. So there is our simplified form for x, and we can actually split these up because you have plus or minus. 
So here are two potential values of x. The one with the minus turns out to be about 0.42, and the one with the positive turns out to be 1.6, roughly. And it turns out that we can actually reject this one. Let's try to understand why x cannot be 1.6. So here is a look at the pre-folded cardboard, and recall this dimension that we had labeled 3 minus 3x. Well, imagine if x was something larger than 1. So for example, 1.6, which we calculated earlier. So you would have 3 minus 3 times 1.6, but if you plug that in, you would get a value that's less than 0. So of course, we cannot have a length of our box that is negative. So let's reject the answer with 3 plus root 3 over 3 and accept this as our only answer. But we still have to prove that 3 minus root 3 divided by 3 maximizes the volume. And to do that, we might talk a little bit more about the restrictions on x. Now, of course, we know that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, there would be no box if we made x less than 0. We just can't have a negative height for our box. And then we've shown also that the x has to be less than or equal to 1. So we have this restriction on x. And what we can do is actually take these endpoints and plug them in. So if you plugged 0, for example, in for the volume, then you would refer back to your volume equation, which we have repasted right here. And if you plug in 0, you will get a volume of 0. And then similarly, if you plug in the endpoint of 1, you would get a volume of 0. So those volumes would be of boxes that don't even really exist. What we need to do then is plug in our critical number that we had determined earlier. So you take your 3 minus root 3 all over 3, and you plug that in for x into the volume equation. So there we have done it. And when you crunch that down on your calculator, you're going to get a volume of about 2.31. And because the measurements were in feet, our volume would be in feet cubed. So this is the approximate maximum volume. A little more about why this maximizes the volume. Again, just consider maybe from a graphical point of view, you have volume as a function of x. Well, we plugged in 0 for x and got a volume of 0. We plugged in 1 for x and got a volume of 0. But then between 0 and 1, we had found this very special value of x. It was that 3 minus root 3 over 3. And at that point, at that x value, the slope of the tangent line was equal to 0. And so we would indeed have a maximum at that point when x is equal to 3 minus root 3 all over 3. And that maximum volume is approximately 2.31 feet cubed.